Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about parallel plates and equipotential lines. Our objective is going to be to solve basic problems involving charged parallel plates in the electric field. And we'll also throw in a little bit on equipotentials at the end. So, let's dive right in. You can calculate the electric field strength between two parallel plates using the formula electric field strength equals the potential difference between the plates divided by their separation. And this tells you the electric field strength between the plates, through the bulk of the plates. Now, in reality, if you're right near the edges of the plates, things bend a little bit, so it's not quite perfect right at the edges of the plates. But anywhere between the two plates, the electric field strength is constant, and it's given by the potential difference divided by their separation. Let's take a look. The units of electric field strength, if you calculate it using E equals potential difference over separation, is volts per meter. Now, we previously learned that electric field strength is the electric force divided by charge, so that would be in newtons per coulomb. How do we reconcile these two sets of units? Well, we can prove that a newton per coulomb is the same as a volt per meter. If we start with a newton per coulomb, we can use an old math trick and multiply that by one to get the same thing but we're going to write 1 in a little bit different way. We're going to write 1 as a meter over a meter. So that'll give us a newton meter over a coulomb meter. Still the same thing, because all we did was multiply by 1. But a newton meter is a joule, so that'll give us a joule per coulomb meter. Now a joule per coulomb, we can bring that up to the numerator divided by meter. And a joule per coulomb, you may recall, is a volt. So this leaves us with a volt per meter we've shown a volt per meter is equal to a newton per coulomb. So the units work out. Just different ways of writing the same thing. Let's put this into practice. The magnitude of the electric field strength between two oppositely charged metal plates is 2 times 10 to the third newtons per coulomb. And point P is located midway between the plates. We're asked to sketch at least five electric field lines to represent the field between the oppositely charged plates. So let's draw our plates. There's one. There's another. We'll make them parallel. Why don't we make the top one positive and the bottom one negative since they're oppositely charged. And point P is located right between the two. Now electric field lines, if you recall, run from positive to negative. So one, two, three, four, five. And anywhere between those two plates, it's the same electric field strength equal to the potential difference divided by the distance between them. Now, it also tells us an electron is located at point P between the plates. Calculate the magnitude of the force exerted on the electron by the electric field. To find this, we can start off with our formula E equals Fe over Q. But remember, the electric force is equal to QE. The charge on the electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. We'll use positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs because we're asked about the magnitude of the force. Now, the electric field strength is 2 times 10 to the third newtons per coulomb. So when I multiply that out, I get 3.2 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. All right, let's check out another one. An electron is located in the electric field between two parallel metal plates, as shown in the diagram. If the electron is attracted to plate A, then plate A is charged. Well, if it's attracted to A, A must be positive because opposites attract. Therefore, B must be negative. So if the electron is attracted to plate A, the plate A must be positive. So that leaves us with choice A or B. The electric field, you'll recall, runs from positive to negative. So our electric field looks something like this, from A to B, positive to negative. Therefore, our answer must be number one. Plate A is charged positively, and the electric field runs from plate A to plate B. Here we have a diagram showing two electrons, E1 and E2, located between oppositely charged parallel plates. It asks us to compare the force exerted by the electric field on E1 to the force exerted by the electric field on E2. Well, once again, the electric force is equal to charge times electric field strength. 
Our charges are the same because they're both electrons, and our electric field strength is the same because the electric field strength is constant between two parallel plates. So if Q is constant and E is constant, our force, F, must also be constant. Therefore, it is the same. All right, let's take a look and talk about equipotential lines for just a second. Much like in a topographic map, where you have lines showing areas of constant altitude or constant gravitational potential, in electricity we can have lines showing equal or constant electrical potential. And we call those equipotential lines. What's interesting is equipotential lines always cross electric field lines at 90 degrees or at right angles. So in the bottom left here, we're showing a positive charge. The electric field lines are shown in black radiating, radiating away from the positive charge because electric field lines go away from positive charges. And then the equipotential lines shown in red are circles that cross each of those electric field lines at 90 degrees. So equipotential lines show lines of constant or equal potential, and they always cross electric field lines at right angles. Hopefully this gets you started with parallel plates and equipotential lines. If you need more help looking for answers to questions, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks so much for your time and make it a great day.